Hey everybody, welcome back to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and is also getting prepped for the big game in NorCal coming up this weekend. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs, and that's right, big news this week, and I mentioned it last week, I believe, too, is the NorCal game. It's GI's, or Airsoft GI's, BB Wars Origin Series, and it's Airsoftology, the game. I'm super excited, like, it's crazy they're having a game with my name on it. It's just nuts, I'm mind-boggling, but that aside, I definitely want to see you guys there. So if you haven't signed up, if you're anywhere near NorCal, if you can get to NorCal, and it's going to be the weekend of the 30th and 31st, I think is what it is. Hang on, let me get you the exact dates because I always screw that one up. Yes, it is the 30th and the 31st. You can go individual days. They have individual tickets. And they also have combo tickets for the entire weekend. So definitely want to come hang out with you there. I'll be playing all weekend long, trying to get some filming into, and of course, hanging out, meeting you guys between the games. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. I've already been trying my armor on. It's going to be a blast. Um, also, real quick, so we always talk about little uh, mini reviews, and I think I brought this one up in a mini review a while back, but I want to show this to you guys again. Um, these are probably one of the best things you can have if you own a LiPo battery. And it is basically a LiPo battery monitor and balancer. So the way this works is you plug your LiPo into there, depending on which you have, like 7.4, 11.1, and it goes all the way up to monster LiPos that, I mean, if you're running something like that, it's a beast, um, and it shows you what each cell rating is. You can discharge your battery on this. You can see if one of your cells is super low, you've got a problem with it, and this acts as a balancer. So you can just use a normal charger in conjunction with this, hit the balance button. These things are relatively cheap. I think under $20, uh, you can find them around. I'll get you guys a link if you guys wanna check one of these things out. But if you own a LiPo, I mean, I just use this, uh, one to balance charge, but I don't have one of my good balance chargers with me, so I can just grab any charger and rock and roll. But more just to check the voltage of my battery. It's like, my battery good? No, that one's not good, that one's not good. Oh, this one's good, I can use this battery. Uh, incredible tool will save, like, I guarantee it will save you a LiPo just by owning one of these if you uh, have it so you don't undercharge or overcharge or anything like that. So definitely want to check it out. Like I said, uh, fantastic tool. I have a link uh, down below where you can maybe pick up one or two of them. I'll, I'll do some research for you for this one and maybe some other different versions out there. But enough of the uh, mini review and what's going to be happening this coming week. Now it's time to dive on into what you're really here for, and that is your questions in the Palco Mail Call. Devin McDonald writes, hey Jonathan, is it okay if my outer barrel is longer than my inner barrel? Please help. So Devin, it depends. Yes, it can be a problem depending on how much difference you have. So, and I'll just grab this little macro off right here. Um, let's say uh, your inner barrel on a macro off <clears throat> goes to here, but let's say you got a big old suppressor or you have a barrel that comes out to here or whatever. If your barrel stops here, or your inner barrel, so that's like the brass barrel that the BB uses to go down. Uh, and then you've just got this big suppressor on it. Most of the time it's not a problem uh, because suppressors have a big, kind of a larger hole in them. But if you get into airsoft barrels, like the actual barrel, let's say you've got an M4 and you've got like this really long uh, barrel, but you've only got a short barrel on the inside, it's like half the length, you can run into a problem there. Uh, simply because as that BB flies out with the hop up, it can still be traveling inside that inner barrel and bump the walls and then cause it to deviate and fly off in every different direction. Now, if it's just like maybe an inch or two short, you might be okay. I've done that before where I was like, oh, I want to put a type ore in this thing and mess with it and uh, just do something uh, it fell like an inch or two short. I didn't have any real issues. But if you're talking about two, three, four, five inches, you could have a problem if your inner barrel, meaning the brass barrel or stainless steel or whatever brand you have, is way shorter than the actual appearance barrel, like the, the uh, outer barrel, the barrel of your gun, what you can see on the outside. Uh, if it's that big of a difference, you could have a problem. So like I said, it's variable. Same issue goes with suppressors. Sometimes you will have suppressors that have a smaller hole. And um, if they're a pretty long suppressor, I've had my BBs like actually hit the edge of the suppressor coming out and they'll fly off in every different direction. So it's kind of the same problem, but it's more pronounced because of the smaller diameter of an airsoft outer barrel. So I know it's kind of a little confusing. I hope that helped you guys understand. And yeah, I would definitely go ahead and make that investment if you can to try to get an inner barrel that matches the length of your outer barrel. Illuminarchy writes, is charging your battery with a smart charger the night before standard? Skirmishes, okay. Yeah, totally fine. Uh, I charge most of my stuff up overnight and have it ready. That way I don't have to mess with it in the morning because I'm always frantically running around forgetting something. Yeah, charging up overnight is not a problem. Uh, more than that, like a few days, three days more in advance, you might start to lose some of that juice, um, things like that. But yeah, overnight, head of the game, no problem at all. 
Sinking vs. Extras writes, would you recommend people spray painting any airsoft gun? If so, what are the handicaps to it? So actually, I think painted guns look really cool, and there's a lot of really good tutorials out there. In fact, I want to say Airsoft Obsessed did a fantastic one out there. I think Jet has one as well on how to paint your Airsoft gun, and there's a process. Uh, definitely want to start with like certain colors first and work your way up. I think it's lighter colors, then go to darker. But um, with all that in mind, you, you've got your mindset on getting your uh, gun painted. There are a few little gotchas. So if you're looking at an AEG, so an electric gun or something like that, you definitely want to make sure you're not getting any paint in the barrel or anywhere where there's electronics, I would highly recommend disassembling your gun before you do it. I, it just, it's going to save you so much trouble. So take your gun apart, take the mech box out, take the motor out, take all the, the inner barrel and hop up assembly out, get that out of the way. So all the guts of your gun are, uh, anything you could, that works and, and makes the airsoft BB go down the barrel is, is out of the way. So you can't screw things up. Then Go crazy, have at it, paint it to your heart's content. In fact, it even looks cool after they wear down after a while. Um, if you don't want to tear yours down, you can still paint it, but you're going to be extra special careful. No paint in any vents. A lot of times your motor grip will have vents uh, in it to allow the motor to breathe or dissipate heat, and you want to make sure that is taped up very well. Um, also, your barrel needs to be taped up. The very end of your barrel, uh, just make sure you have something in there very, very, very good and don't overspray the area. Like I said, I would highly recommend, I do not recommend painting your gun with all your guts inside unless you're experienced at doing that or you feel comfortable with the potential outcome. But uh, yeah, there are some caveats there. Now, gas blowback guns could be more of a challenge because of all the moving parts and mechanisms. So then I would definitely go all in, say, look, disassemble it, take the bolt out, take every moving part out, paint it, let it dry really well. Be careful not to get paint on any of the areas where you're going to have moving parts like that bolt or things like that. Um, again, I would probably use real firearms painting instructions when you're looking at painting your gas blowback rifle. But keep in mind, a little paint in a real firearm could be burnt off as it fires and there's a lot of force going on with the airsoft guns, not so much. So um, that is kind of the gotcha when you do it, but all in all, a great experience and you can end up with an amazing looking gun if you do it right. Jugs McFugs writes, QA, can you fill all green gas mags with propane? Cool name, by the way. <laughs> um, yes, short answer is absolutely yes. You can do it. Anything that you can put green gas in, you can put propane in. Uh, not a problem at all. In fact, they are very similar in composition, almost identical. Uh, the major note, uh, and there's different things in green gas. I mean, we can get into it like there's other isobutane versus just propane, things like that. But all in all, they are very, very similar in uh, composition. In fact, some green gas is just propane with good smelling scent in it and lubrication in it. So that's gonna be the one thing you're missing if you go with propane. So just make sure that you are adding some sort of lubrication, some sort of silicone oil to that mix uh, appropriately. There's a lot of great kits. Airsoft Innovations has a kit, Madbull has a kit. There's a lot of great uh, companies out there that are providing the right silicone oil to kind of get it all mixed in uh, into your mag. Usually it's like a drop or two when you do the propane fill. Make sure you get that propane adapter though. Pick up one of those. Like I said, Madbull and Airsoft Innovations both also carry those propane adapters as well. There's a few others on the market. Um, they're pretty readily available. But yeah, if you want to cut the corners, save a few bucks, you can absolutely fill the propane as long as you don't mind the smell because it stinks. Posh Creeper writes, what camera do you use for your Monday and gear videos? Well, for the first last 250 or 300 videos, I've used this guy right here, Sony NX5U. It is a beast. It's still a fantastic camera. It's my go-to uh, for bigger projects and studio stuff. However, it is a rather large camera. So what I've done here in the past month now, I guess, three weeks, four weeks, I switched over to a Canon 80D. Uh, it's the Canon DSLR. It's designed for um, pretty much filming. It's more of a film-based DSLR camera versus a photography-based one, although it does take good pictures as well. So that's what I switched over to. In fact, I'd show it to you, but I'm filming with it right now. But uh, yeah, for the first, uh, like I said, past couple hundred videos, 250, I guess, or so, I've been shooting on this guy. Uh, 275 videos, and I've just switched this just simply because of weight, size, and the ability to grab it and take it with me uh, now that I'm filming in RVs and really, really tight spaces. But yeah, that's what I've used uh, for my camera equipment uh, up until now, and then now currently, I've been very happy with both. Uh, the ADD actually is pretty fantastic, does a good job, and uh, a little pricey, but works great nonetheless. Well, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from Bullet For My Enemy. And this is an Airsoft channel I was 
wholly unaware of until actually he commented on one of my videos and I was like, hey, who's this guy? And I started watching some great gameplay videos. Um, he is from across the pond here, for those of you who live in the US, uh, and he uh, puts on some really good stuff. In fact, I'll, I'm gonna highlight his most recent one, which is actually a video he, he dug up from almost, I guess, a year ago or close to a year, year ago uh, using his Glock 17. Oh, I said the G word, <laughs> G17 um, at this uh, place called The Stan CQB. So yeah, if you guys haven't subscribed to him, he's got about 6,000 subs right now. Uh, enjoyable channel to watch. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Uh, definitely, definitely work that subscribe button if you guys are into Airsoft gameplay. So definitely check him out. It is, again, Bullet for My Enemy. And as always, I have a link right here or down below in the description so you can click and watch the video and learn more about his channel. Well, guys, that is it for this week. Again, as always, thank you for hanging out with me here on Mondays and asking some amazing, awesome questions down in the comment section below. And again, that's how you get on the show. If you guys want to get on it, put your question down there and vote up your favorites and you will get on the next show. I, I read every single one. I'm not always able to answer every one, but that's why you guys are so awesome and help each other out down there answering each other's questions too. So uh, I really love the community. I, and I do listen to you guys and pay attention. In fact, last week, uh, I got to say my gas blowback question. If you guys didn't watch last week's Mondays, I'll, I'll put a link up for it here. Um, Wow, there are a lot of people out there that love gas flake rifles. I wasn't bagging on you guys, by the way. I was just saying that somebody's asking, hey, I'm gonna get into this. What am I getting into? It's heavy maintenance, right? And boy, you guys came out, man. The uh, the GBBR Master Race came out. And again, I still have them. It's a love-hate relationship. You love them, and then you hate it when they break, and you gotta track down crazy parts. But uh, yes, but I do love the discussion you guys have. That was probably the number one most discussed topic in last week. And I'm curious to see what this week's number one topic is. So yeah, definitely also comment about the questions this week. If you have some opinion that differs than mine, remember, this is an opinion show. I try my best to help, but uh, everything in this world is just opinions. I, I do like to see a good old uh, intelligent and not mean discussion down there. So guys, as always, I'll see you next week. But until then, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits. <laughs>